everybody. We are back with these briars. We're kind of on a roll. As you guys may have noticed, this briar looks different. I honestly had bought the pack, the family pack of briars to customize the two adult models. Like I probably should have gone more into the painting. Like here's our black horse that we had. I very much made it look different, or at least like I made it chestnut. But yeah, it's like we all got excited about the genetics and then here I come and change them. Here we are, we're partway through with this one. Like I wanna make this one agria. So basically I, what you missed with me painting this one was just going over, like it had really nice done markings. I'm just going over them with black instead of dark brown and making smudges along the way because that's life right we're all just making smudges along the way and it's okay so but then we came into the thing like, i want to make a gria this is a very light like this is very similar to the color i want this horse to have coming out except this is a brown color when i want it like a slight gray color, but like very similar to this. I do not have slate gray paint. Like I did lots of mixing. Though at first, when I was like trying to figure this out, like I was pretty sure I had no white paint. I have, I think I have three different varieties of blacks, which is actually very useful. Like I realized that they're like, with two other model briars I did, one of them needed one kind of black and the other one needed another color black because I never would have thought that the color black was so important before. But I have three different types of blacks. I do not think I had any whites. I have now discovered that I have a Citadel white paint. I'm kind of confused about the fact that we have lots of gray patches on it. I guess I shouldn't be con too concerned because I'm trying to make it gray. But at the same time, like, this is a Citadel paint. Like these are very high quality. Since I'm gonna be mixing with who knows what, like we have that to go back on if this experiment goes wrong. But I was like doing research and I found various things online about how to make paint with cornstarch, which then had me thinking of the idea. Let's make paint with cornstarch. Some things to keep in mind though. The cornstarch paints online are usually like they were talking about paints for kids or sidewalk paints. These are not high quality paints. So doing what they had online would not create the desired effect. But if you think about paint, paint is a mixture of pigment, solute, and solution. So our solute, like these are water-based paints. So we'll be using water for our solution. Our, or our solvent, sorry. It is a solution. Solute, solvent. So solvent will be our water. We have various pigments, which will be in various other paints I'll be mixing in. Though honestly, like with the cornstarch, we're trying to add a white pigment to help blend things down because we will have black and a couple other colors to try to get the right shade, but. But uh, our cornstarch would be a lighter pigment. It also, like, it can be, like, it will be a solute. At the same time, you want to be careful. I'm very much concerned about flaking, cracking. Like, we want the paint to paint the horse, not the area that the horse has been on. So. This is something we're going to have to keep in mind very well. I might end up just using the actual good quality model paint, but let's see what happens. I have my trusty dusty Nutella lid that mixes paints. I have cornstarch. I have various paints that I'll be showing. We have our horse, which will so far just be watching us. 
just try to figure out what we're doing. So I've got my measuring spoons. I'm gonna start with the smallest measuring spoon I've got. It is a quarter teaspoon. Okay, this isn't really exact, but we're gonna add that. Another thing. I'm also concerned about what this does to the consistency. Like if we start getting an oobleck consistency with our paint, like I've never painted with oobleck, but at the same time, I don't really want to, if that makes any sense. Like I'm going to use this black, it had an explosion of red paint. Once again, life makes smudges. But this is an acrylic paint. I have my other two blacks, I've got Citadel Black, and I've also got a black that came in a Briar painting kit. Those ones are probably higher quality, like they're thinner paints, they're higher quality model paints, like they're specifically model paints. The reason why I'm using this though is because like the reason why it's differently, okay, there's probably lots of reasons, but the big thing I've noticed is this has a far higher binding agent, which will create a thicker paint, but we want those binding agents to mix with the cornstarch. And then this, this means that the cornstarch is gonna thicken it even more. And so we're gonna have to add water to it, but we're going to have to add water to it. Let's just face life here. But this will add, more binding agents to try to make this a paint and not oobleck and hopefully prevent it from cracking. Let's add the squirt there. Also, like, it's kind of funny, like when I went and got a paint, your briar kit, it was a fantasy kit. So these were the colors I got to paint horses. This is the color I use most straight, though I have noticed that I've like used both the purple and the yellow for mixing with other paints to create colors. Like I use the purple for like help mix with brown for a brown done. I use yellow to help lighten the, uh, the color for the mane and tail on this one right here. So like kind of flaxen, like probably technically flaxen, but yeah, like I have used these paints, just not as, but like for this, like I want to make kind of a slate thing. So I'm going to agree. So I'm going to be using blue way more, but I also feel like this color We'll probably end up, we'll probably find it being useful in the end. So let's find that this isn't working. <laughs> the mixing is, okay. We're going to add that. And make a mess. Like maybe I should rebrand this channel and make its slogan, Life Makes Smudges. Okay, so this is how you make a mess of cornstarch. See, can I? Okay, now there's too much water, but we will definitely be able to. Okay, and now the thing is the pigment from the black is overpowering everything. At the same time, we have too much water anyway. Let's see what happens. We might just be saying this is why we don't use, this isn't gonna work. Actually, let's just mix that in. Okay. We're getting a cold color, but we're already getting to the point where this is reacting like oobleck. And like when I'm like trying to I'm trying to mix 
and my paintbrush is going stiff. So, I think this is an example of what happens. Actually, I'm gonna look. Let's try to. Okay, it will mix. I'm gonna wash this horse off now. This is way too dark. But this is what happens when you try to paint your model with horse starch. So maybe right back, I'm gonna clean up and let's try it again with the actual model white paint. Okay, I am back. The really good thing about that experiment was just add a bunch of water and the cornstarch mess was pretty easy to clean up. Like we even have our original stuff plus some goop. Oh well. But it's like, okay, that did not go as planned. Might as well continue trying with this horse. Like I am going to, it's like, might as well try with Sorry, I opened up the white paint and I am very confused about what I see. I'm wondering if I house this paint incorrectly because this is a citadel paint. This is a base paint, so this will be very useful, but it looks like it is separating. So I don't know what I did wrong except for trying to paint with cornstarch. Fortunately, we're going to be mixing this paint. So let's get some dollops in there. Okay, I was thinking I was gonna do one of the other Let's try to break this up. I think it's breaking up as a better one. And also there's already that dark goop. You can tell that me and white paint don't seem to get along too well. There we go. There's some white. I'm trying to decide which of my blacks I should use. Like this is thick, so I might use one of my other thinner blacks. I think I'm gonna use the black from the buyer kit actually. So let's find add that. I also think I added way too much of the other paint. So we're getting a nice gray there, except I'm nervous about how many of these whites clumps are still clumps. Let's try to mix the paints in the bins too much but at the same time I don't want to lose all the paint on the brush here. So I add a little bit of purple like it doesn't change the color much but just like brightens the tone makes it look a little bit more natural if that makes any sense you wouldn't think that purple is, makes the horse look natural but i've honestly been surprised how useful these paints have been for painting horses okay after that 
I'm going to use a Citadel model paint for blue. Okay, I really don't want to mix that paint. That's a good paint. Okay, get a little bit of blue. That's probably way too much blue. Oh yeah, that's way too much blue. But well, we definitely have our blue going on. And now we're going to, okay, see if I can get this white pigment out. Here we go on today's tutorial of smashing paint. So, like, how are you guys doing? Like, I am just doing random stuff. I think at this point I'm just wanting to add more white. I think I should be good. Maybe let's see what it looks like once I put it on this horse. I'll probably want to water it down to like use use the pigment, you use the shading that's already on the horse. Cause like usually you want to like do a primer when, uh, whenever you're doing a model. Like that is like the base of any base is your primer. Like this horse has already been painted. And uh, I really wanted to use the colors like I like I really liked how the horse was painted. I just wanted to basically change the amount ex extension. I wanted to turn the brown the liver chestnut into a gria. Like honestly, that's what I wanted to do. Like I just found it hilarious. Like getting like the, this genetic horse family thing going, and it's like I love the models. Like they really served well for the horse. The, fiction, the fictional horses I wanted to depict, the models were right. The patterns were almost correct. Like, okay, I did like get rid of a bunch of socks. Like this one got to keep one of its socks, but it's like the patterns were basically correct. I just wanted to turn the red base horse into a black base horse and the black base horse into a red base horse. This is what I do with life. Okay, so we now have this. We're going to see what happens on this and see if I actually, let's see, let's. Um, we still like. I'm trying to decide, like, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more water to thin this out a little bit more because it's close. I feel like it's still a little blue for me. Maybe thinning it and help. Uh -huh. I am concerned about the bubbles. And usually I want, like usually I wouldn't want the paint to come on like this, but I do want to use, okay, I am, okay, I'm definitely have to do a lot of touching up afterwards. I'm trying, I'm, Right now I'm trying to decide, like, do I like this color or do I not? Like, am I just 
mean, I can the fact that it's very, that it's different from the red, which is honestly why I'm painting it in the first place, or am I reacting on the fact that I don't like it? I don't know. I'm definitely gonna have to come, come back. Okay, I keep on getting bubbles. I'm trying to figure out why. Like maybe it's because of there was cornstarch. Solution, like very watered down, but it was still in there. I don't know. Like, what do you guys, like, I don't know. When I look at it in the video, this looks, it looks very similar to mm, to the stock photo that I've had the inspiration from. I am not looking at it right now because I am filming with what I would be looking at my stock photo, photo with. But I think I'm just going to paint one side with you guys, and then I will paint the other side and do like the fine details. Like, okay, I'm going to dip in the paintbrush like this. Try to get. A bit of a fading there. There we go. Because we have then feathering, or like, I don't know, I don't know what, like, fading into the black. It's like one thing with models, like, make sure you hit the underside of the model. Three-dimensional thing, for better or for worse. Now the big question is, what do I want to do with the face? How much of a black mask do I really want this horse to have? Because you, if you saw my previous video, you will see that I have way more of a mask on than like it had as a red done. I need, oh no, I'm... Some of the reasons why I need to do a lot of the fine detail in not videoing with you guys because I don't have enough, I'm not skilled enough to be painting at this level while talking without doing smudges, especially with this is a very thin paint. Um, Gonna paint up to the point. I'm definitely going to be using my more detailed stuff later when I am not talking to you guys. But let's, okay, let's water it down. Well, this is interesting. The paint here is trying to separate again, too. Let's do. Forehead. Okay, this gives you a general idea. Well, I think I've gone a long way in turning the red liver roan into a Gria. The more that I'm painting it, the more that I'm like seeing like, this is the color of the horse as opposed to comparing it to the red, the more I'm liking it. I am thinking that I really need to finish this paint job when I'm just focusing on me, have a better angle, have a better look, that I can more easily go to my box and rummage through tools to get exactly what I want. 
So I am going to cut the video off for today, but here we go. We are mixing paints for a custom briar, learning why you should not mix cornstarch into your paint or the obvious will happen. I might include this one in a couple other custom briars I've done in a future video, maybe just have them as Easter eggs and backdrops of videos if I continue doing these. Like, I don't, I don't want to call them live action. Like, look at my hands, they're live action. But this, this isn't a video game video. Like, if, with more of these real life, I might just, like, hide them or something. But... Welcome to Insanity, mixing paints the worst way possible. And don't, it's, I would not recommend painting your miniatures with cornstarch. This is my little two cents. Have a wonderful day. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys later.